I'm using Open Broadcaster Software version nil, and it seems to be working exactly the way I needed to in the first place. So we're going to do this as an experiment. The analogy of the disassembled bicycle, tricycle, and partially assembled weed whacker on a Christmas day. <coughs> the door is bashed down, and instead of hearing ATF, you hear DMV. You ask them after they've knocked you all down it burnt the tree down and tasered it. Why, why did you do this? Well, we saw, because we uh, illegally acquired your delivery information, that you were receiving enough parts to make an illegal and dangerous tricycle penny farthing moped. How? Well, you can use the weed whacker as a motor, put it on the front wheel of a full-size bicycle, and the front steering wheel parts will fit into the unassembled tricycle. And as we all know, a disassembled bicycle is still a bicycle. A disassembled tricycle is still a tricycle. And a disassembled weed whacker is still a motor and a deadly weapon. So therefore, because we can find a combination out of hundreds, we're going to decide that you were going to make, and you had malicious intent to break the law by creating a gas-powered big wheel. Let's go on to the next totally not related concept. A person is arrested because they're in possession of ammonium nitrate and diesel fuel, which can be used to make an anvil bomb. And by having them in the possession, they're guilty, and this is evidence, without any other stimulus, of them making an anvil bomb. And then in court, after wasting a bunch of time and energy, the guy says, uh, I was plowing a field and putting down fertilizer, and I was plowing the field using a diesel-powered tractor. That's not making a bomb. That's making corn cobs. Lawful possession for a farmer versus anybody else. Since it's expected that a farmer might have a tractor that runs on, let's say, diesel, and might have fertilizer, because that's a fucking job, um, it's never been held without other evidence to, to, to force it, a compelling reason, to be that you could state that you could imply that this was making a bomb, or derive it as the least likely possible combination, or use it as probable cause for busting someone's door down and searching the entire place because you think that they're part of some sort of anti-American, anti-government militia group because the guy received a suspiciously large amount of ANFO and diesel for his, you know, hundreds and hundreds of acres of farmland and five tractors and sons and daughters that are operating all this equipment. Oh, and let's just throw in that he uh, had a YouTube channel and, hey, Farmers for Truth, how you doing? So anyway... I'm not saying, I'm just saying, you don't look for the most bizarre, convoluted, bullshit reason to bust someone's door down. And <clears throat> if something carries a criminal penalty as a government statute in prison time, and it has an ambiguous set of assertions and statements in it, it is the duty of the legal system, and especially the duty of the Supreme Court of the United States, to interpret the, a ruling against the position of said entity demanding that they be taken seriously when they do something bombastically stupid like that. So, Farmers for Truth is safe. And we're at the 4 minute and 12 second mark now, and the video capture software hasn't crashed, and I'm at 30 frames a second, and it's doing everything I told it to do, and why didn't somebody tell me I could use OSB? So anyway, I'm not going crazy. I'm beyond it. So here we go. You, you, you had a computer with software to, to intent. You intended to YouTube it. And this is, goes along with the conspiracy theory mode. Yes, the ATF is gear, guilty of conspiracy theory thinking. If you tell Thompson Center Arms Encore contender project thingy that they're doing, if you tell them in a court case, wasting everybody's time and money, that them selling enough parts to put together something you interpret as illegal out of literally hundreds of combinations of parts that you could put together 
from what they sell because they sell barrels, butt stocks, uh, frames. If you tell them by having these available that they're intending to produce, um, I don't know, a rocket powered uh, uh, silly petty gun, you're literally reaching so far that it absolutely, you have to get slapped on the wrist for it. So this is what happened. The interesting test bench or test platform or system, they call it platform a lot of the times, I don't like that word, almost like a rail gun. Thompson Center Arms produced something called the Encore and the Contender. It's a thing, as in it started off being a thing. It's a single shot, break action, multi-caliber compliant design. What does it consist of? Well, it starts off being a pistol for legal reasons with the ATF it needs to. Because pistols can be very small, use rifling, they have to have rifling initially, and they have a small handle, pistol grip. And if you put a longer barrel on it, you're allowed to do that depending on what you do and what the caliber is, <clears throat> as long as it's still rifled. And if you want to use smoothbore, you can use it, you can do so, but you have to configure it as a shotgun or a rifle. And also depending on whether or not you have the firearm but not a shotgun or rifle pistol, you can get away with doing whatever the hell you want to because rules have exceptions all over the place. But anyway, let's start with this one. <clears throat> What else could it become? It could fire center fire, rim fire. It could be configured as a muzzle loader. It could fire shotgun shells, pistol ammunition, rifle ammunition. <coughs> and I'm presuming, because I know for a fact it could, flare gun flares. Because it could be configured as a muzzle loader, all of the size restrictions on how long the barrel is or how long the buttstock is or whether or not it has a foregrip go out the window because they decided a long time ago muzzle loaders were non-regulated in any way, shape, or form. But your state laws will, of course, be different, California. So, at the 7 minute and 18 second mark, because I can see the damn timer and it's probably reliable, here we go. It had an interchangeable grip or stock and an interchangeable barrel with an integral, because most guns that are break action are, an integral chamber for the cartridge. This forces the rule, if you're not aware of it, of you having to register the gun, whatever it starts off life as, as the lower. The lower is considered the part of the action that contains basically all the stuff that we would consider part of the triggers and stuff like that. And if you make it to where it'll pass the rules of drop safety, to where it can't be fired unless you intend to do it, it's a straight legal gun, even if it doesn't come with a barrel or a buttstock, because it's considered a 100% lower, you have to register it as something. And since it can take a pistol barrel, and changing from pistol to rifle or shotgun is legal, but not the other way around for some fucking reason. You know, there, well, there's all these loopholes. You mean people trying to follow your rules that aren't an etch a sketch? Anyway, yeah. It, what they did is they registered the entire part of the bottom. It's literally. Look, I, I'm, it's exactly what you're thinking. If you take a pistol and chop off, chop the entire top, the upper, off, and chop off the handle, it was listed as a pistol because it was the mechanism for firing a bullet if you threw a barrel on it. Now, basically, to build this, they imitated the break action standard shotgun where you tilt the frame forward to put the shell in, but if you tilt it forward a little bit and push a button, the whole barrel comes out with the chamber and the ejector or... or, or uh, extractor or whatever you want to call it and the only thing left of the gun is well it's that you know the handle and stuff yeah and you could make a how pistol out of this now the other thing is you could also exchange it because it just used a hammer and have it drop in a barrel that had uh, a breech plug jammed into any damn barrel at this point make it into a muzzle loader and have all the fun you want to they're fun sometimes and mount it any way you wanted to, with or without a stock, or even not having a handle, and also make it into a railgun where it's bench mounted. Yes. Everything at once. A universal firearm. And yeah, you could probably configure and yes, I'm I'm gonna say this right now in this video. I will find a way to make this into a pump action shotgun just because I want to piss off the ATF. So anyway, here we go. <clears throat> what what was this able to do? Because it changed out the sights with the barrel and all of it, they would be perfectly sighted for the barrel, which is the major component with chamber that causes the bullet to hit a certain place. As long as you made the back 
breech block big enough and also oh you wanted to do off-center stuff like uh, the only two or three varieties of rimfire sure just make the barrel lower or higher so it hits it but it offset it doesn't care it's just a mechanism so what sizes 22 long rifle 17 HMR 22 Hornet 0.416 Rigby 600 Nitro Express elephant gun 28 20 and 12 gauge shotgun and also muzzle loader mode every damn diameter you can come up with and 45 and 50 caliber muzzle loader while you're at it with rifle mode and because they don't have a restriction on barrel length in most cases you could configure it as a 12 gauge muzzle loading rifled barrel pistol if you wanted to otherwise known as a i hate myself make my arm break on a single frame that contains no cartridge specific characteristics or even rules but it and it required no alteration but it was readily alterable as given to something else so here's what happened a frame serialized as a pistol that could be converted to all of this stuff that contained detailed warnings about the one combination out of hundreds at this point you couldn't do you can't put a 10 inch barrel that came with it on there that's a pistol barrel if you put on the buttstock for a rifle or shotgun or whatever unless of course it was muzzle loader and even that rule has changed since then it was carved into the buttstock telling you that and the barrel actually probably said it after a while too it included warnings telling you yeah this is one of a hundred combinations but it's the only one that can be a legal problem so don't do it so what was the one legal thing they were dragged into court over that screwed them in the butt 1992 the United States versus Thompson Center Arms Company Supreme Court ruling a rifle carbine conversion kit for adapting any pistol stepped in it to a rifle even if they're packaged together with either of the barrels because you'd have to have the barrels to convert it over for a complete kit that was the other ruling they had before then doesn't constitute an NFA 1934 short barreled rifle with a barrel less than 16 inches long because you'd have to be assuming they would leave the pistol barrel on and just put on the buttstock which would be a waste of most of the cost you're assuming bad faith on the part of a person aka you're presuming guilt on a person's part as an excuse to try to find guilt by using it as a preposterous and stupid probable cause for entry including blasting a door open again since NFA carries criminal penalties with it that are bizarre overscaled you merely receiving this possessing it or being able to do this sort of like having fertilizer and diesel cannot be construed as intent or justification for further investigation because it shouldn't now I'm gonna bring up a couple of things here well we're at 13 minutes I know I, are. I actually have a counter on my screen with one app somebody did something right oh my god run for your lives a bench vice testing stand for testing barrels the one I was going to be talking about was literally the break action barrel for a shotgun converted into a clamp to hold any barrel and the body of it being able to be mounted to a table if you mount a gun to a table it's not an NFA concealed weapon because it's bolted to a building you bolt it to the floor okay artillery piece okay 22 caliber artillery piece take me to take me to court the reason I'm bringing this up is I was trying to come up with a universal platform and the one that showed up best and this is the annoying thing was using a 50 caliber shotgun there isn't such a thing there's 410 but there's no 50 because that keeps you from breaking all these rules but these guys did something for us all they made the ATF have to go to court and basically said you're creating a situation where there's assumed guilt almost no one with this kit ever made any NFA controlled items out of it if they did it was accidental you had to make sure that you changed out by taking all the parts off and then put on the buttstock and then the barrel not leaving any part on it it was a stupid it's like playing twister with Satan here but what if I modified this design like they did almost to a shotgun level and made it fully mod thanks for watching have a good day good luck with that and thank you for watching maybe the first video in a long time that isn't screwed bye